post off Instagram. Guy saw it. I had said, hey, if you see this and you want to come get it, it's free. So there the old ones UZ sits for the last time. Guy's coming in a few minutes. And then that's gonna be it. One less thing sitting in my driveway. So today focus on me or the Dotson flags um, we are moving forward I got rid of the Lexus motor last night for free off some off of Instagram to some nice folks that stopped by to pick it up so that's gone um, today I I'm waiting on motor mount materials I'm actually gonna use hockey pucks along with fabricating the steel part um, I am going to need exhaust studs that are coming because three are broken off. I can get those out today, but I don't have them and I want to put them in probably before I try to lug this motor in there. Um, so in the meantime, I'm going to mess around with kind of getting stuff off the motor that I can and the wiring. I've done quite a bit of research on it. Still not 100% clear why you couldn't leave the harness together and deactivate whatever pins you didn't want to through HP tuners or something like that but at any rate it'll be cleaner and I can get rid of everything and only um, use what I need so that's what we're gonna be doing so I've gone over this a little bit before but I'm quite pleased with how everything looks on here I don't have any broken connectors getting rid of this. I already bought a block off plate for that. And then the EGI stuff. You can buy these little kits all over eBay that block off this. And block off both of these. So I've got those on order. Um, that's a separate little plate that you know, you buy it from. Some people sell it all together. I think I paid 25 bucks total for all those. Something I could fabricate if I really wanted to. The cutting stuff like that is not really worth 25 bucks really. Um, so yeah, it's basically going to be disconnecting the wiring harness. Give myself a little spot over here to lay everything down. Plenty of videos on this, I'm not sure how much I'm going to get into it, but essentially you can take the ECU, depin it, it's very easy to depin uh, the wires that you don't need, and then once you find out exactly where you want everything, you can put it back together and find out what works for you. Be part of making it a standalone versus just using the plugs they have is that. From what I've read, you see a pink wire um, that's going to go essentially to, I can't remember what pink or orange it goes to, but that's good. And orange, and that harness will go to slow holes all the time and then the ground. Um, people do it different ways, some people bundle them all together, some people use them in different circuits or what have you, but I guess I'd have to get that out of there for that reason. So that's what we're going to do.
Japanese stuff when it comes to plugs. Anybody who's used a standalone has probably used GM plugs on stuff. On an engine this old on a Japanese motor, I'd have spent triple the time trying not to break plugs, and I probably would have broken half of them anyway. So off to a decent start. It's a matter of spreading that out. Um, typically, people spread it out so that they have it like it's going to be on the engine. Um, peel all the covering off and then start looking up the diagram for what you don't need. Um, that separate for the battery cables and the starter, not even the starter, just battery cables to um, alternator. So we'll get going. to get sheathing off there's a bunch more stuff to take off as far as the tape goes before I get the end of this but for now you kind of get the idea okay so what you see here is gonna be a blue on Alice one and a red trucks I think are different what they're referring to are these things these things snap right over the top of this. You can take a really, I used a pocket knife, but right in there, right there, there's a clip. You just press down toward the bottom, this side, on one. I didn't, doing the inner is probably easier first, but at any rate, those clip down or clip off. I labeled mine. Somebody gave me a clue on YouTube. There's this little thing that lines up. And um, I also labeled mine with numbers. Two, two. Maybe overkill. But that's how you get those off. It's easy. Frankly, I could clip this on to tell you better, right? Um, this goes on the back side so it has clips here and here in the middle and on the end a little more difficult than the blue ones but basically you want to squeeze those together I had to use a pocket knife right under here at the same time to kind of pry it up but at any rate um, just label everything to get them out of your ECU, if you ha mine were already out, but this screws into the back of the ECU. It is a seven millimeter, which is the weirdest size. I work on metric cars for the most part. I don't have a seven millimeter. 
Um, you, I had a, well, I don't have a socket. I did have a open end, so that's how you get it out. The other thing I wanted to show you is that these wires have pinouts. So there's a diagram you can get off um, lt1swap.com has diagrams, but this, this is very handy because it's all of them are numbered. So it's not hard to find. You don't have to rely on wire color alone. So again, you should definitely go to lt1swap.com. He breaks it out. Blue connector. Blues are things you definitely need to run the standalone. I think those are things that may need to go to like a little fuse block. Black you don't remove. Blue or sorry, yellow you remove. So it's very, he notes the wire color, he notes the pin, um, he has it for every LS engine you could possibly think of. So where we are is I've depinned a lot of these. So I'm going to need to trace them back through here to get them out of the final destination. Depinning is super simple. So each one of these pins has a little tab right there. I just use my pocket knife to kind of lift up on the tab like that. And then once I had done that, if I pushed up a little bit with the edge of the pocket knife and then pulled the other side, it came right out. They're super easy to, um, to deal with. So if you're pulling out by mistake, it's easy enough to just put it back in and pull the right one out. Okay, so the wiring continues. I'm going to update with an explanation about some of the things I was confused about. Um, yesterday I started to kind of reuse the loom. I'm not going to do that. I'm actually going to wrap it in this stuff, this tape, which is called Tessa Tape, T-E-S-A. It's a really tough, like, cloth electrical tape. I think you see them on European cars quite a bit. I've used it on the Datsun. Um, really tough stuff and looks pretty good. So that's what we're going to do as opposed to reuse all of that, which is actually in really good shape and obviously cut to the correct length however sorting through all that to get it right when I think this other stuff looks better uh, not appealing okay so now we're getting to the part where I'm actually gonna move this harness to the car or to the car to the engine um, I wrapped up the easy stuff part of the issue with rewrapping is that I want to make sure that these plugs and what have you aren't wrapped or they can't reach and I'm not sure where they go until I get back there. Um, I may end up just leaving that corrugated stuff back to the trans. I don't know. Maybe not seen by anything. Same thing with this. This goes down to the O2 sensor, starter, mm, not sure, one other plug over there. So right now, kind of looks like a little bit of a rat's nest, but bottom line is that <clears throat> once you pull out all the wires that are not needed, you're going to end up with a few wires that are still Well, all these come out, but there's a couple body plugs. <clears throat> Again, ltwiringswap.com has the body plug pinouts. <clears throat> you really don't end up using them anymore, but there's some wires that go to them that have the pinout pulled. Like these two came out of the ECU. But then there's other ones that you're going to clip off, but you are going to use. Um, 
again same thing with that so what happens is he has marked on he's marked on the guide yellow means you don't need it so those are the ones you pull blue is the ones that you do need to run standalone at first I was like well what do you mean by that well they are the ones that basically when you use your little fuse box slash relay panel that you're going to need um, those will go to it or those will go to some part in your car that needs the signal so fuel pump relay that green and white wire that you pulled out or that you labeled is going to go to the fuel pump relay control engine speed signal goes into your car and runs your speedometer um, high speed cooling fan relay so if you use two speeds on your fan I'm not sure I'm going to do that but if you do you pull that one out um, check engine light so if you want to check engine light in your car you can have one you pull that out you'd run that on a separate wire <coughs> inside the car vehicle speed signal that's where it's going to run your speedometer if you run a speedometer So that was the reds, the blues have their own set, but it's basically labeled the same. Everything in black you're not going to touch, or label really, there's no need for it. So 19 and 20, <clears throat> you're going to pull those out, and basically in this harness, pink goes to switched 12 volt orange goes to battery all the time um, brake signal switch that's going to be for um, your those with the automatic basically I want to say I have an automatic so I'm using it neutral safety switch <coughs> orange and black those are the couple things that I'm not sure yet on how to wire depends on what the Lexus is set up right or like there's your low speed fan control relay. Um, I'm going to be getting HP tuners, and in HP tuners, you can set what temp you want that to come on. I will probably only run one fan speed. Um, again, <clears throat> orange, that's going to go to battery all the time. Dark green, the ECM PCM serial data is actually going to go to your OED2 port. The thing that I'm buying, um, which I'll get to in a second, will include a little relay panel, or two relays, a little fuse panel, and it also comes with the OBD 2 port and all the wires. 75 bucks plus a little bit of shipping. I started pricing out between the relays, the control, or the little fuse box, buying the connectors, the wiring, I mean it was going to be half the price of that just to mess with. I've done enough wiring, that's going to be a nice simple little thing uh, to do. But uh, again, LT1Swap.com does have diagrams for that. At any rate, so what happens is you have your red connector this is one of the wires that comes out of it this is 50 so I need to label these so I don't have to reference this chart every time but I go to 50 and that's my vehicle speed sensor so that's gonna go in its own separate little harness basically what I saw from another um, YouTube guy um, is that he's taking all the um, wires that you've labeled here that are more like sensor related so that's number nine that is 
fuel pump relay. So this is going to actually go to that little re relay panel I was talking about. Um, but the white vehicle speed sensor, um, that's going to go inside the car. So he takes all of the wires that are basically going to be used to signal something and he puts them in one little loom. And then he takes all the wires that are going to be used for power and he puts them in another loom. And he, t he takes it out of this. So this is all going to be wrapped, wrapped, wrapped. But at some point you have to get these out. Um, I don't think I'm going to run them directly out of the back of this thing. Um, I haven't decided that yet. Um, but at any rate, that's kind of where we're at. So what I'm going to do... Focus, please. What I'm going to do is take this mess and I'm going to put it on the car, the engine, and we'll go from there. Thanks for not focusing camera. Okay, so now I have it mounted on here. This isn't going to be the final setup for these, but that plugged in. These go in the intake, which is not here yet. Water temp sensor. Alternator. O2 sensor. Coil pack and all the injectors. So this is what I was concerned about. I had this one loose with a long wire. I didn't know where that went. So now I do. Knock sensor. Um... This one was pretty obvious, but map. Uh, this one came down to the transmission. This is vehicle speed sensor. So I'm going to route that back in there down to here. And so anyway, I can actually start wrapping all the stuff up with confidence that I'm not going to leave some wire out. So that's what I'm going to do. Okay, so we're getting some progress. That's all covered up. This is the vehicle speed sensor. I'm just going to use leave this loom. It's not worth taking off. It's not going to be seen by anybody. Um, this has all been wrapped. Now we're getting down to the end. Um, we have this certain bundle of wires that comes out. This. We have a couple of these pink wires, and then we have um, other bundle of wires that comes out of the red side. So it's just me kind of figuring out once again where I want them to come out, but we are getting closer.